Welcome to our new Harvest Welcome banner. Um, banners are a lot of fun to paint. This special banner fabric doesn't unravel so I can cut the bottom and make it totally decorative. Okay, so I've got this just cut and hanging. And then what I've done up here is we've got this um, rustic banner topper, made it into a sign. The banner weaves through here, front ways. And then I've done a kind of clever little thing here, and I'll, I'll show you the back side. I've taken these little guys here, glued magnets to the back, and then used another um, super strong magnet to hold this. And um, these guys aren't going anywhere. So then you could also easily take this out, you do that, and you could hang it without the burlap if you wanted to. Okay, so you just take the burlap out. Okay, and then you could just flip it in through the top if that's what you wanted to do. There we go. And now you have just a banner topper or a banner instead of with the burlap. Okay, you could even give yourself like a little magnet type effect up there in the corner if you wanted to. A um, lot of super fun things. I think this will get your imagination going. I think these are even strong enough that you could put them up top here. Let's take a look. Edge going on because of the way I had it um, sitting on my desk. That's not going to be a problem. I like to paint on the rough side myself. You can certainly paint on either side. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got a big old um, giant piece of this, and I'm only going to need somewhere near half. If you have wrinkles, or if you have any kind of, you know, defective stuff, then all you have to do is go ahead, you can iron it. Um, it's, it's good up to a smoking point, you know, it's really not a problem. Um, I'm going to use my tracing, and see how much I've got, way more than I need, but I like to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just give myself a couple inches at the bottom, plenty of side room, and then I'll go ahead and just cut my piece there, and then I will um, base it with black. Um, I'm going to use my roller and roll on a couple of coats. Okay, in this case, one of the things, I want to explain a couple things about Rocklawn. Rocklawn is a drapery lining fabric. We have it available on the website, or you can buy it um, out there in craft stores. Um, what I like about Rocklawn is it doesn't fray on the edges, so I'm going to cut out the shape of the leaves at the bottom and some stuff on the sides. I don't have to hem it. Um, it doesn't curl if you've treat treated it right. Give one coat of like black to the back side and then one coat of varnish that's plenty for the back. But to, to keep it hanging straight, do do one thing at least to the back side. Um, you can hang it out in the weather. Do make sure that you give yourself um, an exterior grade varnish. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and squirt my paint right on there, and I'll stand up. I've got the nonstick um, craft mat here, and I've got a big version of this. Okay, and that will keep any messes. I can go right over to my edge and just go right onto the mat. And so then when I flip this, or if I slide it through, I'm going to end up with a mess on the back side, so it's super important that you plan on painting that black. Okay, and then this will spatter at you, so be careful that you plan for that. You can see I've got a couple of spatters right here. So a couple of coats, and then you will sand. When this dries, it'll have a little bit of a nub. Um, you want to go ahead and sand to um, just lightly um, to relieve that. All right, so this is the corner that had the little curl, and notice that now that I have a coat of of paint on it, just one coat, it's laying and doing what it should be doing. I'm sanding, you can see it's got a little bit of a like a raised nap kind of thing. You just give it a little brush and then wipe off your dust. Or that scratches and then repeat and give it a second coat. The biggest thing I have to say about curling, I've never had a problem with curling, um, is that you have to, like this is obviously not curling in any, any direction, you've got to let it dry, don't do thick coats, um, do a coat of something on the back, I haven't even done that yet, but, um, and then use your roller, do not use Fini, the, um, the wipe on varnish, because it does weird things to the, the rock lawn itself. Alright, now that we've made a mess, here, we're going to go ahead and give it a little squirts with water. We use the little handy scraper, and everything just peels right off of our um, nonstick craft mat. 
right, as I'm prepping my, my painting table for um, putting my nonstick mat down, this is exactly why we need nonstick mats. Because what happens is this, while this material will come off, it stains and it gets in within the, um, the plastic little nibs on the table. So it's never going to really completely come off. The nonstick mat will make sure that this table stays perfectly clean um, forever until you, of course, take it off or whatever. But nonstick mat, totally a better situation than trying to get paint off a plastic table. Right, it's very important that we lay out our colors um, in its sequence. I mean, it's not actually very important. Um, as long as you understand what we're doing, we're going to go from the darkest color, um, russet, to then burnt orange, then canyon orange, marigold, and bleach sand. And it's a helpful hint to um, lay them out in order. Also a helpful hint is to use your, um, your pop top here to open up your jars because after a while, I don't know about you, but I get like a, a sore spot on my finger and my thumb here. Okay, so we're just going to put these out in the sequence that they are um, in, from darkest to lightest. Okay, get those all laid out. All right, I'd like to explain a little bit about what makes these um, dry brush brushes different. And so what I've got here is I've got my um, a stroke brush. This is um, a standard thing that you'd find for most filberts. And then this brush is the dry brush. And this one's new, so let me get the sizing out of it. Okay, and so to show you the difference, I would rather have a dry one, so I'll get an old one. Okay, to show you the difference, let's get in close. And this makes all the difference in the world. Okay. So here's what we've got. Notice on the regular one, can you see where it starts taper? Whoops, can you see where it starts tapering right up here at the very tip? Not very far up. Okay, and then if we notice here on this dry one, it's much further down where it starts tapering. Okay, so you can see it's much further down where it starts tapering. So you can see when I press on that, you can see how they start springing up. Okay, that is the integral part. That's the part that makes this thing work. Okay, so when we're loading our brush, you can load a wet one or a dry one. It doesn't matter which way. Uh, but when we're loading our brush, what we're going to do is we're going to load our brush into just the little edge of the puddle of paint. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to push all the way down flat. And we want to start kind of scooping it up. But we're not scooping. Notice that this stays flat. Okay, review this if you are having any problems later when you're painting because this is very important. And it's just really silly stuff. You might be pulling out a puddle like that, and that might make everything kind of not work. So I'm going to wipe that off because I don't want no puddles involved in this. So I'm going to sneak up on the paint. It seems like it might, it might, <clears throat> pardon me, it might seem like that this is a, a big waste of time trying to spend this much time loading this, but you're going to use this dirty all the way through these paints. So you don't actually go back and wash your brush. So you load it once and then use it and use it and use it and just redress. Now what we're actually doing, you'll see me every now and again, I'll press off to the side to prevent any things like saddlebags. That's what I call them. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make a big lump of paint in the middle and have it be flat on the bottom where we're loading it. Okay, so I'm gonna press, 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 load, 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 and I'm pressing pretty hard, tapping, and I'm building that paint up to the top, which is gonna feed the dry brush. Now what we want is we want this to look dry. Okay, we're gonna take our flat paper towel. Very, very important that it's a flat paper towel. If you have a crumpled up paper towel like this, it's real easy to do this on an edge instead of flicking on the tip like you should. And what this um, edge scraping will do is it will rob all of the paint that is there. Um, we just want to prevent that. Um, let me reload a little bit. When you put your brush down, if you haven't flicked, then you're going to have a very sharp line, and we don't want that line. Okay, so I'll redress. You always go to the paper towel, and you always do one flick on the paper towel. And let me grab a sheet of paper so I can show you. The 
this is supposed to look like. It's a little bit hard to see um, the, um, the detail on that dark black, which is part of the secret of dry brushing. Okay, so the effect of our brush, we're going to lay our brush down by reaching ahead of us and then lay it down and lift it up. Okay, if we jab at it and do this, we're going to end up with start and stop marks <clears throat> that we don't want. Okay, flick on my paper towel. So what we're going to do with dry brushing, notice how scratchy that is? That is why they call this dry brushing, is it looks as if you used a very dry um, something to make those marks. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to layer the dry and what happens is you end up with these layers just kind of all crossing over each other and it makes it so that you can't see like the forest for the trees, if you will. Okay, and now I'll tell you why or how. So with dry brushing, what happens is, this is my base coat is black, right? And with dry brushing, the black is the very first shadow color. Okay, and this is really important to know because then what you're going to do is you're going to go with the second shadow color, leaving a little bit of the darkest, then you're going to cover with a lot of this dark color, a little bit less of this, a little bit less of this, a little bit less of this, and a little bit less of this. So as we go down, we're just doing just a little bit less and a little bit less. Okay, if you start getting a curl on the toe of your brush, um, just flip it over and reload the other way and that toe, that toe will um, even out. And you can at any time wash your brush, that's fine. Um, but you do want to re-dirty it with your paints. Okay, so that being said, let's go onto our pumpkin. We want to use shape following strokes. Get my sleeves out of the way. And we want to go on our edge, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and start with my brush. I wish I could get this whole table at an angle so you could see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to pull that right along that edge because I do want that edge to be um, defined. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my brush on the chisel and go ahead and almost just line it right there. And that on the edge of a piece is the only time I'd ever do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is with feather light touch, I'm just going to tickle that color on and I'm not going to bring it all the way completely to my crack here where the pumpkin will meet and I'm not going to bring it all the way down to the um, other piece of fruit. Okay, I'm going to bring it awfully darn close but not quite all the way there. Now notice that you can't hardly see it, well you can because it's shiny because it's wet, um, but you don't see it very much. So then at the top of this I will start that again at the very top in this case, I want it to be fairly solid up there because that's where it's the edge of the piece is. And notice that I've got myself just a little bit of a point. Well, guess what I can do? What's neat about dry brushing is I can just go back to the color before it and make my corrections. Okay, so that is a really good, um, like, gives you a lot of confidence that you don't have to be perfect. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead shape following strokes. If my pumpkin turns this way, I want to go that way. If it goes this way, I want to curve that way. Straight in the middle. Okay. And leave some space. Okay, now my toe is already curling up just a little bit right there. And that's because I'm just talking it to death. And it's drying up. So I'll just reload. Click on my paper towel, and then I'll go on to the next section. Be careful about making outline type effects. You do not want outlining. And then where I've pushed down a little bit stronger there, and I have a strong um, color, what I'm going to do is um, let that kind of dry, and then go tickle out the difference. What I love about dry brushing is I don't have to do a bunch of base coats. And you'll see as this goes that it's um, actually a pretty fast way to paint. Okay, so now we'll go over here. These brush, brush, brushes, if I could talk today, these brushes are um, a little bit stiffer fiber 
So they do a good job of being resilient against this feather touch that I'm using. So they don't collapse. Um, sometimes I've got a, another, I've got an awesome, this one is an awesome filbert that it has a floppier um, texture to it. And this guy has a big springy texture, so when you're doing your strokes, everything bounces back. And this one is just stiffer so that it doesn't have, um, it doesn't flop about, but it doesn't, it's not real springy either. Okay, so now we'll get the back pieces, and we're just going to pull that in. Okay, now we've got everybody being left um, in their position. Now I can go through and just go back and decide if I want to have just a little bit more even tone. If I want to bring that edge to the edge. You can do layer after layer. Now what's neat about this is pretty soon you won't be able to tell that there was black back there at all. If you mess something up, say I get a big old blob of something. If I mess something up and I blob right there, just take your black, load it like you're dry brushing, and tickle it back down. And it does a great job of making, uh, masking it, putting on makeup. Okay, get something right there in that corner. What's interesting to me about this, don't forget to flip on, flick on your paper towel, is the, um, the repetition of doing this is not like um, doing like you're gripping. You're, you've got a very loose control on your brush and that makes it just super easy for um, hanging on to stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this little guy down here off camera. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my brush and then I'm going to reload over here. I've got that right on top of my wet spot there. Reload, but dirty brush reload. And I wiped it off because I had a whole lot of paint in there. I don't want to make this into a brown color. But we want to go dirty brush because we don't want this bright orange sitting on top of that brown. So it's actually going to end up making a baby color. Okay, and so get that nice and loaded onto there. And notice it doesn't take any time to load the second time. Don't ask me why that is, I can't quite figure it out. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on to our pumpkin. Make sure you're going with the juicy side up, which is counterintuitive. It seems like you'd want to do that. And then you always want to start where you're the most, going to want the color the most bright. And as I'm feeling this, I'm getting a little bit of drag. Let me grab my sanding disc. Sometimes you can get a little bit of raised stuff going, and we don't want too much of that. Okay, so I'm okay there. And then let's go ahead right in the middle where I want it to be the brightest. And we won't bring this covering everything that we've just put down. Isn't it amazing how that already starts taking shape? Okay, so that section's good. Sometimes I really appreciate being able to go and getting like one piece of a design started. Um, this piece has been sitting on my desk for like two weeks and I couldn't, like I was doing a lot of um, logic brained activities, a little research here and there and new products and stuff like that. And so just getting a little bit of paint on this thing is making me feel so good and then it's going to feel very exciting to keep going. So sometimes getting started is just a matter of getting the paintbrush and getting it wet. 
That's my motivation speak speech for uh, getting started here. Okay, so pull that in. Now this is the area that that's going to be darker in. So we do want to be careful that we don't get those areas. We don't want to make that really brightly highlighted because it's in the back. So we're going to want our highlights more on the top centers of these sections. Okay, now I'll do the bottom one off camera. Okay, so I can now, this is dry. I can, if I think that that's not bright enough, if my next color, for example, if I'm going from this color to this color, I'm going to want to make sure that this color is really well built before I add this color in because this is so much brighter than this is. These two are very close together, so maybe I don't worry about that. But these two and then even those two, um, we want to make sure that we're well established. But I will go ahead, just for the sake of argument, and go and just build my center of interest area just with a couple more flicks. Won't hurt me and you get to see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see the difference between the two, although this one is wet and this one is not. And my that first layer just wanted to raise up. A really important step to do is to go ahead and let these both dry and erase these white lines. Um, if you don't erase the white lines then it kind of fools your eye and you're not sure what's going on. So in this one I have just a little bit of a what I call a bullseye. You want to watch for bullseyes. There are areas that are left either too bright or too dark. Okay. Now we'll wipe our brush, and it was really funny, I wiped my brush out, but when I just wiped the back side of that, look how dark and brown that was. So there's still just quite a bit of brown in my brush. Now dirty brush, do you see how cool it is that we didn't have to base coat that? Base coat, you know, 10 layers, let it dry, sand off the ridges. Um, I've had more people ask me if my dry brush projects are oil paints because the colors are so vivid than any of my flat acrylic base coat shade highlight projects. And I don't quite understand that either, but it has happened time after time at conventions. Okay, so now we're going to go into that next orange color, which is Canyon Orange. Make sure we're dry. Um, with the dry brush, if you have wet on here, this paint will stick to that wet. Wet is attracted to wet, so you make sure that you are not, um, don't have any wet spots when you're building your colors. Okay, so see how that's just in a higher area? Makes it a little bit bigger highlighted kind of a thing. Okay, so to see those scratches right there? I can do a couple of things. I can blot them. I'm going to go back on my brush and I'm going to look for what might have caused them any saddlebags. I'll wipe those off, re-blend on the palette, and flick and make sure that I don't have saddlebags. And then I think the next color will take care of it. But stop right away when you start seeing something you don't like so that you can take care of it instead of making a bigger mess. You know, and look at your brush. You know, it's not always you. Sometimes it's that stinking brush. If you don't have the brush doing the right things, uh, or the brush knowing what it's supposed to do, then you are not going to be able to paint well. So sometimes the brush needs to be fired. And I prefer to blame the paintbrush anyway because it can't talk back. Okay, so I'll get that on there. Now, the next color is going to be this lovely yellow. I'm going to wipe out my brush. And then this is going to become a yellow orange because we're mixing the two together. Now, you don't have to worry about trashing your brush because you're leaving it dry because we have that awesome brush cleaner that takes care of 
everything. Okay, so now we're really going to focus on where our... Okay, notice how that's just really coming off yellow. Okay, so we want to just really make it be like this is where things raise up. You never want a dry brush on top of texture. So if you have um, cardboard underneath your rock lawn and you try dry brushing, you'll end up with a texture, which could be kind of cool. The texture will come through and will wreck what you've got going on. Now this yellow color would be an example of one that I would like to go ahead and um, repeat for strength. a little bit of a chisel. Okay, so notice that I've got a yellow one and a yellow one and this one has stayed very orange. So I'll go back to you. Let me just build that just a little bit better. Oh, and I didn't take my darn lines away. I'll do that next. Actually, more than likely, I'll probably just go ahead and finish this and then do it. But you definitely do yours, especially if you have strong um, strong tracing. I almost don't have tracing. I think sometimes that the paint eats your tracing if it stays on there more than a week or two. I think the dogs have sat on this and I think I'm going to go back here with just, uh, nah, I don't like the yellow. I'm going to go with that orange color from before. Notice that now it doesn't take very many swipes at all unless I'm trying to fight to get into a certain spot just there. Okay, so I can almost get it done with just like three or four little swooshes. Okay, now definitely one more time into the yellow. Definitely on our higher, um, more highlighted pieces, areas. Isn't it kind of fun to see it just kind of come to life? Just with a few flicks of the paintbrush. Okay, we'll get the bottom one. Okay, I'm squinting my eyes. It looks like right here I may have left just way too big an area. So I'll take care of that. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off and into the white color. <clears throat> this is going to be one that I would leave to last, kind of. Um, it's not one I would try to establish all the way because you're going to want your colors playing against each other. If I get this too bright, then I'll have to bring this too bright and yada yada. Um, I have, however, painted a number of pumpkins before. I'm going to squint at it. Your light needs to all be coming from the same angle, so if this one gets highlighted on that side, you want to pretend like the light's hitting it the same on all. Okay. And I am going to go back and fix that. And so shiny things, um, hard things are shiny. So when you want to show that something is hard and reflective, you need to give it shines. Okay. Tickle that down. Okay. Okay, so to fix my area right here, okay, first thing that we want to do is go ahead and get rid of, let me find my eraser. Okay, so what we're going to do, I've got my micro eraser. It's just going to put my absolute erasing right where I want it, and it's not going to be on my paint. It's not going to be all over the place. Okay, yeah, you can get refills for these guys. 
lines. Like we should call this like an on the spot eraser. So I'll get all my lines done and um, then I'll show you how to fix that error. Okay, I've got my bridge out. One of the things that will help make it easier for those of you with shorter fingers is with the bridge. Okay, let's try it like this. So with the, when you are, okay, I've got a little bit of a new setup here, so sorry about that. Um, when you are anchored on your hand, okay, you, the amount of lift that you can do when you have short fingers is not very great. Versus when you are on here, there's a whole lot of um, reach that you can get. And what is good about this is it's going to make your painting softer. So if you need to blend something, that's going to help you. I'm going to dirty my brush in the first dark color. And then I'm going to skip over to the orange, the darker orange color, which is um, burnt orange. Blend it on my palette, flick on the paper towel. And then what I'm going to do to fix this and close the gap is I'm just going to increase. I'm doing a kind of a sideways shuffle here. Increase the amount of orange. Looking for anywhere else that I need to also increase. Maybe down here. Okay, that just will finish it up just a little bit. And my line over here needs to continue down instead of cupping in. Watch those shape following brushes because they really tell a story. And if you finish with a little hook, it's not going to tell the right story. Maybe we'll bring just a little bit more out here. Okay, always use your finger erasers. They're the best ones. Okay, I think that we can call those done for right now, and we'll move on to the next element. All right, the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on this corn. We're going to load our brush. I've switched to a smaller brush. I've got the number six right now. The eight would probably work as well. Get my brush loaded, flick on the paper towel, and then basically we're just going to kind of base coat um, this with our streaks. We don't want it base coated, so we're just going to streak to base coat. If we um, base coat with the dry brush, then it'll give two different looks, so we don't want to do that. So we'll just streak in the color that is going to be that basic background color. Fill that area in, sort of. And we'll do all the ears of the corn that way. Leave a little bit of the black showing down where it joins. Okay, so about like that. Okay, I'm going to wipe out my brush, go into milk chocolate, and dirty brush load. And now we want to go ahead, I've got my um, triple threat ghost rider, and we'll go ahead and we'll put on some cornrows. Trying to see where they were before. Okay. Flick on the paper towel. And then we'll go through and we'll just kind of make our little gobs of corn there. I'm not going to make these variegated corns. You could do that if you wanted to. I'm going to make them more uniform. I think that if I got variegated in this case, I think it would mess with my palette just a little bit. And I could eat, switch down to one size smaller brush. But I'm fairly lazy about changing my brushes. I'll leave that space in between. I think that dry brushing is one of the most relaxing ways to paint. So you're kind of almost sketching with your brush. Maybe we could call it sketch painting. So it's not as precise. You know, you don't have to have that um, extreme 
this is where my, my stroke is going, and it lends to a really nice folk art look as well. Go back and catch some of these guys up. As we're laying the foundation, I'm going to do the other three off camera. All right, we're going to go dirty brush into then, let's see, honey brown. Wipe your brush out so that brown color doesn't take over the honey. And we'll give that just a little bit of a moment. And I think I will have to switch to a smaller brush. So I'll go to a four. Okay, so I've got my smaller brush loaded. I'm going to go ahead. i got to have it. So here is a problem that people have. And you don't think you're going to have it, and I just had it, so I'll share. Um, if you don't have that juicy paint built up on the top of that brush, your paint brush isn't going to release paint onto your project, and then it will be not, um, not optimal painting time. I need that to release right off the tip. And I was having to press, and that was making things messy. So you've got to have it juicy. So go back and reload as you need to. Okay, so as soon as things start not behaving, go get some more paint. And I'm not using it all up. I just have to go back and force it back down to the bottom of the brush or to the tip of the brush. Okay, so we're not looking very corny right now. We'll go into, wipe my brush, go into the marigold color. I'm thinking I'm going to try something a little bit different. And okay, with my curved flat brush, which is the brush that's part filbert and part flat brush, I'm going to float, and we'll see how this works. Nope, not enough water. I'm not liking it. I'm gonna go into honey brown first. And let's float in a rounded, cornered, little corny thing. It's like a one-sided kind of sea stroke. I'm liking that. That was just too yellow. Get me now. I also need to erase my um, my white lines. It's probably messing with my brain a, a little bit. dry brushing. I'm going to switch to the number two and load into a little bit of honey plus the marigold. Okay, so I've got a mix of the honey brown and the marigold on my brush. And now I'm going to go up and just highlight that upper corner. Remember to let it fade off as you get don't cover the entire thing is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes my mouth and my painting hand don't run at the same speed here. And let them fade on the corners. 
I'll make it a strong side to side. Once again, so corn is shiny and hard, so we want to go ahead and give it just a little bit of shine. Go into our bleach sand. And just with a corner of our brush, up in that upper I might have to tighten up my corns, my rows, so just a little bit spaced wide. Okay, and then I think we're going to go ahead and give it a, I'll use the number 12 brush, and let's give it a little bit of a glaze of We'll go into russet and see if that does the trick. And then I think we'll go into the marigold and kind of tone that down just a little bit. We'll see how I like that. All right, we're going to work on the stem. Okay, so we're going to use evergreen, and we're just going to basically dry brush base coat it. You can let plenty of black show through. Scratches and streaks are awesome. What I'm doing right now, I've been sitting here debating. I'm going to have to switch to a smaller brush. Um, this is the number 10. It's great for big areas, but not so much for these little areas. Turn it sideways and see what I can't get done. Okay, we'll finish with a smaller brush. So what I'm doing right now is I am checking out what I need to do for color balance. I'm not certain where I'm going to go with this, um, the husks because I think that I don't want it to be brown because I think I'm going to need more green and I'm looking to see what my colors are going to end up being. So just on a design note, whenever I film these I'm always designing them um, while I film them. I don't like painting things more than one time if I can help it, so I always try to Film it and paint it and design it all at once. So hopefully you get the benefit of that because you learn from my mistakes. Makes it for a more interesting project sometimes. Okay, I think I lost the line of that this time. So now we'll dirty brush load into Hauser Medium Green. When I first learned to dry brush, um, I took a series of seminars and it took me so many times. So this is one of the things that the bridge is great for. That's wet, but I don't have to worry about it because I can just put my hand right over the top. Anyway, it took me so many times to learn how to do this right. I kept not loading my brush juicy enough. It was like so anti what you're taught. And it took me quite a bit of fighting with myself to get it right. But then once I did, I really, really loved it. Okay, so I'm going to bring that swirl over, bring that one there, I'm going to make that a little bit more fluid. And then we have to bring those back around. the variegated, the 
those stem grooves in the dark. And I'll turn my brush on its chisel to do the um, highlighting on the skinnier stem. I could switch to a smaller brush too, but um, I think that just works. <clears throat> back and just brighten them with the Hauser medium green. Okay, and then we'll go into Hauser, is it Hauser light? Yeah, it's Hauser light green. And we'll highlight in between and keep this more towards the middle and the center of interest. Looking on the paper towel. And then the high areas. Alright, we're going to get the final highlights on to our stem. We're going to go into the Hauser Light Green and just put those highlights in that center of interest. You can go into green tea for your lightest lights. And I'll leave it there, and then I'll balance colors at the end. Okay, now we're going to do our grapes. I'm going to start with, let's see, start up top here. I'm using a number six dry brush. By the way, fun story about these dry brushes. I had um, sponsored a class in Portland, and we had just huge, huge full classes and we were using a different kind of brush, a French brush, and France went on strike and brushes in North America and couldn't get these brushes for like months and months and months and months. It took forever to get them back in stock. And when that happened, I went looking for um, a brush to replace this that would act like this brush. And this brush, it took me two years to find it but it is like half the cost and lasts twice as long and it's made, well it's actually I think made in China, but it's made and produced by a manufacturer here in the US, so much, much easier. But it took a really long time. I had one company send me every filbert that they made and they sent me something like 40 filberts. That's how many they had. Very shocking. I had no idea there were that many filberts in the world. Okay, so we're going to go and we're just going to base coat to fill these in. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because I think it's boring. Alright, we've got our dirty brush going into, that was Admiral Blue, now we're going into Grape Juice. And we're going to highlight and I've got my number six brush still. I've erased all of my little lines. And now we're going to make some purple grapes. So we kept all of our highlights up in that upper left corner, and so that's what we want to continue to do. Although these guys over here are going to be difficult because only their other sides are showing, but we'll just give it a little bit of a glaze there. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we haven't been floating, except for a little bit on the corn. Um, and we haven't been doing a whole lot. We didn't, didn't do base coating. So it's just a really good labor saving technique. Clutch, or the catch is, is you gotta do it on a dark surface to get out of all the base coating. It has to be like the color of your base coats or your shadows. So the black ends up being like our darkest shadow. A 
Now the other kind of dry brushing that people say is dry brushing is the one where you rub or rouge um, with a very, very dry brush, and that's an, also a very fun technique. Um, we'll get them confused, the two of them, but this is um, that one you do base coat with and and then rub on your highlights. Okay, so just getting that established. Tuck a little bit back there. You can go back in with that same color and you can do just a little bit more if you want a couple of these to be a little bit more purple. You could do that. Maybe you just do some so that some are high and some are low kind of deal. Squint your eyes, that's the best way to tell um, patterns and things like that. <clears throat> okay, then we'll wipe our brush and go into Wild Orchid. <clears throat> Pardon me. Our brush. And let's take a look at how that's going to do. Don't want these grapes to get too far away from us as far as too bright. Okay, I'm just giving those little highlights. It's just such a feather light -like touch. You just really want to keep that touch soft. Okay, let's quit. Look. Dark one. You can go back to a couple of them if you want and brighten them up. See how fast those grapes get done, huh? Okay, now we're going into soft lilac, which is really almost a blue color, but I'm doing a dirty brush. And that's going to give us our shine on our grapes. some other glazing and stuff going on. Go back into my purple and purple up my blue colors, muddying my purple. Purple that up just a little bit. Okay, so there's our grapes. Okay, so super duper important. Um, that we go shape following. So I've canted my um, banner off to the side to give myself the right 
stroke. We're going to go into soft black first. Get it all loaded. Okay, click on the paper towel. And that first coat is going to, we're going to bring it down from that smile, the apple smile. And go shape following. Make sure you're loaded juicy enough. I know I keep prompting about that, but if you're not, and I'm doing it, so um, part of the reason that I keep saying something is if I'm doing it, then I know that some of you guys are doing it. And it's easy to forget. It's very unnatural to load your brush it's so full. Okay, so shape following. It's a little bit weird when they're tucked in behind things. Reload. Okay, and just go ahead and tickle that color on. And the, the direction changes a little bit on that back area, so be aware of that. And then we'll recant the front. Okay. All right, we've got our apples dry. Mine uh, took a little bit longer to dry than I expected. All right, so we'll pull in. Leave those streaks. Don't get um, over excited about the streaks because they actually just all fade together. Okay, repeat on the other two. Okay, and now we'll go into the, let's see, the last color was russet, now we're into heritage brick. Now we'll start paying attention to how far down we go with our highlights and things like that because we don't want uni apples where they're the same color all the way across. Okay, so now we've got that get picking up on a red color. I think I'll bring it down just a little bit more. Remember to switch gears, and we can also go across the top right here where the color is coming out. We can just kind of give it a little float and then pull out. And that will make it appear a little bit more like it dives in right there. All right, next we're going to pick up a little bit of butterscotch with our dirty brush, and that really changes the color quite a bit. So see here, this is butterscotch, and then of course this is a new orange color that we've mixed. And then this is going to be in our highlight area. So I did scant around the back side and then I did more to the front. Oh, I skimmed on the paper towel and picked up a previous skim and almost just put big brown smears in the middle of my apples. Okay, so we'll get that a little bit more because we're going to do a wash over the top of it with um, cherry red. Same thing back here, whoops. And be 
road. And highlight right where you want it. Okay, now we take and we rinse our brush and with very wet cherry red. And are we in any way near dry? I don't think so. We'll give that just a wash. And make sure you bring it down into the shadow area. Lot if you think it's too much. Okay, and at some point we're going to go through and give these um, other pieces of fruit a little bit of cherry as well. So we can do that now, we can do it later, we can give a little bit on the grapes here and there, carry the color around, up from the bottom with the cherry red, I'm going to just warm everything up just a little bit, get a little bit going on the corn. Can't leave the leaves alone, so we can get a little bit smearing in there. All right, I'm going to show you one of these leaves in the middle in green. We're going to use evergreen, and we're going to do a base coat with evergreen that's dry brushed, so it's not really a base coat, but we're just going to kind of go from area to area here. When you get your rock lawn in your way and you can't do anything about it, fold it over. Okay, and that's kind of distracting, so I'll. Okay. Get here and make sure you can see me. All right. So we're going to continue to load our brush just a little bit more. And then we'll just kind of do that smeary little base coat. Use the chisel of your brush to get some of those um, areas to get pointy. Shape following in a way. Don't make them too hairy looking. Mine are getting kind of hairy. I look like I've got a bad, fuzzy little leaf. I can go through and fix him though by just joining some of those um, areas. So if I think this is getting too fuzzy, I'll come down here, just join it together, come over here. And now I'll wait for this one to dry, and I'm going to go ahead and base a couple more. All right, we're going to get some espresso on these um, husks. So we'll go, and we're going to do them shape following to the lines where they apply. And it'll just kind of be an all-over dry brush moment. So this one goes, this one folds and goes in front of that one. So what we'll do is we'll switch our directions fading it back into that, so we'll bring it down, whoops, which direction am I going? So we'll flick it down into that, but not bring the color all the way down. And then that'll give it that shadow. 
that we'll want. And we'll switch directions and pull to the tip. And then just repeat with all of them leaving spaces. So I'll show you this one. Um, so this one comes, it's going to fade here, like it's got shadow. It's going to fade here and it's going to fade here. So in this case, I need a smaller brush. So onward to a number six. These brushes, um, you, if you have one good operational set, you'll be pretty good. Um, with the dry rubbing technique, you really do need two or three sets of those brushes because these you can use wet. Okay, so I'm just going to tickle that down, and then I'll come over here and tickle this down. I'll go to the edge there, but tickle it not all the way, and then bring it across. Make sure I get my edges. And then here we'll go the other direction. and then we'll retreat all, treat them all the same. All right, you can kind of start seeing things taking shape. It's kind of getting cool, I'm liking it. All right, so now I'm gonna dirty brush into khaki tan. And maybe even mix just a little bit of my brown in there so it doesn't come off too chalky. Chalky is where something looks like it has been like written on with like a chalkboard. All right, so we're gonna start someplace where we know. You always start with what you know. A good friend of mine, Paula, taught me that a long time ago. That's what I've been doing this whole time that I've been painting, is I know my pumpkins. I know those have to be my orange and my green. And so if I start with what I know, then I can fill in the rest of my knowledge. Whereas if I start um, with stuff I'm unsure of, then what I know may end up not being right either. Okay, so where we have these little foldy fold things, we're going to make a line and on our edges make that line too. Just tickle that down, give it a little bit, let, let all the colors show. And so did you see down here where I had just a little bit of shading? That's a good thing because that's sitting way down there in the back of the design element. Whereas up here, this is going to end up getting pretty bright because it's in the very front of the design area. And because these are crinkly, crackly um, things, it would be totally fine to go ahead and leave like some, maybe we'll make like a highlight here, like it's folded. So you see, you can add extra texture if you want as well. And this guy I think comes down here in front. Okay, so see how we're establishing some crinkly cracklies. <clears throat> okay, so that will go over here. I'm not working these necessarily in any kind of rational formation. So don't don't think that you have to do it exactly in this order. I do want to hit my high spots first. Or not first, but I want to make sure that I hit them so that I can see what I what I know about it, if that makes sense. Every now and again, I'm having to reload quite often. Every now and again, go pick up a little bit of the extra espresso. Okay, so this guy's going to be pretty predominant. guys a little bit more so. And so I'm leaving that shading next to, do you see how this is graduating? This is cool. So here's our highlight, here's our middle, 
and here's our very dark. And it just looks like we floated it or that it's just got a natural shading going on. Dry brushing always amazes me because of how versatile it is. How easy it is to establish. Okay, now when I get way up here off my edge um, to the end of the project, I don't want these areas to be super bright because once again, they're going to lead my eye right out of the painting. So, um, not once again, I guess I haven't said that yet, but that's what would happen is you'd lead your eye right out of the painting. So, you can make it be this bright this time, but you want to make sure you back off um, and don't put too many more highlights on it. Something's funny about this, but I don't think I'm going to worry too much about it. The nice thing about crinkly corn husks is um, they don't have to be visually perfect. Finishing up. Just a couple to go. With these not being quite the same, like, you know, they're not really the same, I think it's more interesting for me to show you. Okay, and as I'm squinting my eyes, I'm looking to see, you know, do I like it, do I not like it? We're going to sneak into a little bit of toffee. And we're just going to go hit some high points. Okay, so, ah, uh, oh, toppy. Okay, so we'll just go and scribble in just a little bit here and there. We kind of want to lead the eye through the painting. So we're establishing some lighter crackles, some drier texture. Now, my um, next color was going to be bleach sand, but I'm kind of wanting to tone this down just a little bit. I'm going to get out some honey brown. All right, we're wanting to take a little bit of honey brown, and I'm going to go ahead and wash this on some of the areas. So. going to give it a little bit more warmth. This is a pretty dead color, but not make it like I'm yellow. Definitely don't want to be yellow. So I'm kind of dry brush washing, I don't know if you can tell that, so I'm just flipping in some of that color. not washing it over the whole thing. Okay, I'm still a little bit kind of all the same colors. 
So let's go into, I'm going to go pick up a little bit of russet. And red it, red up my shading areas. So I'm dry brushing up from the base. Okay, so I think it's time to leave my um, husks alone and let them talk to me after I talk to everybody else. All right, let's get these leaves tackled. I've got um, Hauser Medium Green on my um, brush. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the top up here Woo. and make a mess. Okay, so then we're shape following. We're going to leave some of this area in the middle. We're going to leave it alone. Ha ha ha. Okay, we're going to leave some of that dark in the middle. Okay, and that looks like dog doo doo. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So here's the thing, right? If we have something that looks like doggy doo, um, then you can just back up a step. So I'm going to back up a step to my darker green and just kind of glaze over to unhairify my, my leaf. And I'm going to go forward and then go to the Hauser um, light green. And sometimes it only looks bad because we haven't finished it. So sometimes that's the way to do it. So go, I've switched to a smaller brush. Um, that's getting much better. Okay, and then what do I want to do down here? Okay, so that's much better. And we'll repeat and do the same to the other leaves. Okay, so we'll get our bigger leaf. We've got the Hauser uh, light green. I'm just giving it a little bit more solid treatment coming over the top here. And then down here we'll get that same. Remember, real juicy loading. I've been finding that to be very, very helpful to go back and just glom up my brush. Okay, then we're going to go into green tea. The paints are drying on me. Give that a little highlight. And we'll keep that highlight more up, just a little bit there. Okay, then we can come up here and we can do the same thing. I'm going to spend a little bit more time in my house or light. on the others. All right, we're going to add some stems with some of uh, the Hauser Light and the, um, yes, what do you call it, green tea? 
I had lots of water and just a brush mix. here and there. And bring some stems. Knock it back one and go to the Hauser medium for my stems. Okay, we'll just go through. Add a little bit more highlight to different things that you see. I want to go into my um, husks and just give a little bit of marigold going up. I guess we're looking a little bit too brown. I want them more like, um, I just want them more yellow. Okay, I've got to get my leaves on here and we've got to deal with our squash here. I think we'll deal with this as I'm going to use the Triple Threat Ghost Rider and I'm going to deal with this as a kind of a variegated kind of squash. Alright, we're going to paint this little guy right here and make him into a leaf that is green. Totally going about this upside down, but I think he'll be okay. Nope, won't be okay. Much easier to pull towards you when you're painting with the dry brush. And we'll go ahead and make the squash bottom into the evergreen as well. And make sure you differentiate that top from that bottom so that, um, or the the green from the green leaf. Make sure you leave some space so that you can tell that there are two things going on there. Okay, and then this comes up and it's going to do a little bit of ha-cha-cha -cha when it meets sure that we have that green leaf variegated enough. It's just going to be a simple green leaf, nothing too fancy about him. Just need some dark in the middle. A little highlight. And we'll get a vein up there for him. Okay, then we'll go ahead and do the next step on the squash. And we'll get the top. 
top. I'm going into yellow. Go ahead and do the um, russet color. merge them in together. Then we'll go into honey brown. Then we'll go into marigold. I think we might have to repeat marigold. It got kind of swallowed up by the other colors. Okay, I'm not a fan of my squash at this point, so I think I'm going to make him variegated. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just drag my colors down in through the green and my green up through the top and we'll just make them a variegated squash. I think it can kind of fade going up there, but I'll we'll give it some highlights. to our marigold and really just pop up some of those nice golds. <coughs> I'm going to get my, let's see, I've got a 5 8 angle shader. I'm going to go into evergreen and we're going to glaze the base of the sky and bring the color up. Maybe one more time. So that way it's variegated, but it's not separately variegated, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that'll be better. And then I think on... We just could use just a little bit of that treatment as well. Just a little glaze to sink everybody down and together. We'll be on our squash and we'll give him a lovely shine moment. Okay. Do we have, I think we can pump up our shines on our pumpkins. And we might even be able to go ahead and touch our grapes with just a little bit more shine. The apples never did get a shine, so we have to get them just a little bit of 
something. Okay, I think we can probably beef up our kernel shines now that we have got some intensity built up in other places. A little bit when I did it at the first, it was terrifying because it was so bright. Okay, now we got everybody being a little bit shiny. That's better. Okay, now we're going to work on our brown leaves. They're going to be russet. And then I've got some kind of straggler thing going on there. Okay, so we'll get some russet going. There's kind of an all over. Really juicy loader brush. Brown coming on back here. Going on up here. Shape following. And then repeat on the other browns. All right, now we're gonna go into our milk chocolate and on the ones that are fairly dry. All right, so we're gonna do milk chocolate. Bring it up in the tips. Just highlight all the tips of the different leaves. And we're going to repeat on all the same other shapes. All right, we're going to get some highlights. Wipe my brush out and go into Honey Brown. Okay, let's go find some dry leaves. Keeping those highlights up a little bit higher. Okay, 
same thing on, I'm going to show you the same one. This guy going down here. So a little bit, like I've painted a million dry brush leaves, and I always kind of think they're really ugly. And then you get the finishing touches and you do the color balances and they turn out lovely. So right now I'm painting on faith that they're going to be just fine. Okay, so I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but I feel like if I'm not brave enough to say it, then and that's not a good thing, so. All right, so this didn't look like I used any of this color over here. So I'll go back and get some. Don't forget to flick on that paper towel. Okay, so another good thing about the bridge is it holds your rolling banner in place. Okay, so that in just a little too far. All right, finish highlighting the tips with the honey brown. Okay, right, we're going to go and grab a little bit of the marigold color, dirty brush, and we don't want to bring these up too much, but like right now I have not very much difference between my leaf and my pumpkin. So I want to just increase that. I think I could use a little Shazawi out here. Maybe a little more down there. And I think we could use a little of that love on our green leaves as well. This is where things start getting fun. Because this is where you start just kind of spreading love all over the place. All right, so. Okay, and I think we'll go into bleached sand with the yellow mix. I don't want this to be a shine, I just want this to be one step brighter on those highlights. Might read shine, we'll have to see. I'm squinting at it. All right, now I'm going to wipe my brush off and pick up some of that yellow. And I've got a little bit of chalky situation going on with my leaves. So I'm going to unchalkify it with a little bit of the yellow. Too much of the yellow. Okay, so I'll go over here. Kind of walking my eye around. 
going down here. Over here. probably have a little bit of our yellow on our grapes. A little bit of yellow on our apples. I think would be just fine. Beef up some yellow on our pumpkins. Okay, now let's go get out some of our grape juice color. <clears throat> Pardon me. Get a little bit of grape juice and We'll get out a dry rubbing brush, one of these guys, and mine is so, okay, look at, that is so stiff that you can't even bend it. So, time for talking about brush cleaner and restore. And this is how you're going to take care of the brushes that you um, were dry brushing with. I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is so super so this is dry and you can see that you can't even bend it okay so I'm gonna go here and it immediately starts releasing paint that I had dried in there and that is miraculous okay and these little guys right here are teeth so that I can rub my brush on there and tease the paint out and now I can see some brown coming out. I had a lot of paint and now it's bending just fine. I'll rinse this with soap and water and it'll be ready. And I have just saved myself, I don't know how much this brush is, I think it's like 15 bucks. So one bottle just saved me one $15 brush. And all of, I can do all of the brushes for months and months and keep my brushes in great shape. Let's see how, how much we've got gone. Now, of course, I have to let this brush dry before I can use it. So now, see, I can bend those bristles. Yay. All right, I've got, I'm gonna take you back out just a little bit so we can get this whole thing on here. Okay, so I've got my grape juice and a dry rubbing brush. And I wanna go in and just kind of walk around some color. Get some purples up in my Okay, so you can see I'm just going to give a hint of a tint of stuff here and there to the different elements. That's going to carry my color through. I think we'll do a little bit with our red as well. Still have some of that out. I think we can easily have a little bit of red here and there in our leaves. A little 
lot stronger than our apple. Base of our pumpkins. Okay, I'm looking, I'm squinting. I have a little bit of red in our grapes. Dunk that one in, and now we'll add different stems and things like that. Okay, so this guy will go in front. Apples have to have a little stem action. We'll make that be just a russet, um, soft black. Let's go soft black. Give them a liner brush with the bleached um, sand. We're looking for moments here. Got to have a couple of leaves with. Um, we need some stems and things like that in our leaves. So we need our veins. Not enough water. Way too much water. And so we blot. Some of these you can't have veins because there's just no not enough leaf showing. Alright, we're gonna get rid of a little bit more of the hairiness of our leaf by glazing. I've got evergreen. On my brush, and that just brings that down just enough to unify. All right, now I've got some magic mesh. And I'm just going to cut off a little bit. So this is sticky on one side. And I'm going to lay it over where my highlights are, and I'm going to add just a little bit of squares of accents. Uh, right now I'm in toffee. Okay, I need to get things juggled around here. And you're going to dry rub it, so you want it very um, dry. Yeah, maybe I want to go bleach sand on that. And we'll go with our bright green, the la la la, how's our light? Just to add that little bit of texture.
go out of Hauser Light into a new brush and pick up, um, I think, the toffee. sand on the grapes. And maybe a little bit of bleach sand on the leaves. And I think now we'll try just a little bit, and we'll see if we like it or not, of the desert turquoise. And let's try dry, br dry brushing and kissing just a little bit here and there. Here, just a little bit here and there. just to funk that up just a little bit. like it. And I've got my base cut out here and now I've got this kind of lined up so I think it's straight. And now I want to come up with some kind of, I've got to know my topper here. So, kind of centered over the top. use my ghostwriter. This comes off with spit, water, varnish, and like anything. Eraser. It is amazing. Okay, so I think I'll be in the hole if I do that. And it seems fairly straight. So let's go. Okay. And then what I'll go ahead and do is measure between the two to make sure that it is indeed fairly straight up there. And then I'll cut my banner straight. All right, I had a crazy idea with a piece of the burlap. Um, to shred this, you just take the, the threads and you just peel them out. I don't have that very straightly cut, I don't think. Okay, and then I'm gonna flap that over the front and I'm going to um, put buttons or something there. All right, so here's my crazy plan. I went ahead, I've got to paint this bit. I've still got to paint the back, actually. So I've gone ahead and cut this so it's a little bit wider, and then I just cut it there, and then I folded it all under to get it through and threaded that. And I've got drilled some holes into my flat leaves, and I'm going to put them like buttons here. Okay. So, on that, what I like is the idea of securing that to the back, okay? However, I don't necessarily want to secure it to the back. Um, 
in a traditional way. So I'm going to try one of my glues. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I think the E6000. I love the idea of the little sample pack so that I can have a bunch of different kinds of glue without investing $30 in glues. And they're super handy to put in your paint kit for when you're traveling about. Okay, so I'm going to glue magnet down in my pocket. These are super duper strong. The way that you get these magnets apart is you slide them. So when they come in your packages, they're really tough to do. Yeah, really, really tough to do. You slide them apart and then you move them away from each other. Okay? And then they'll grab on to anything metal around them. So you go ahead and slide them apart. I'm going to glue a magnet onto the back of each of my leaves. And then I'm going to use another magnet on the back to secure it so that I can just take it all apart and connect my magnets and I'm good to go. All right, I have to get this top of my banner based. I'm going to use this right over my nonstick mat. You know, there are a few things that make me happier than nonstick mats because you can use them for so many things. Now, what I have to be careful of um, is that this doesn't slide because if it slides, I can smear black paint all on my piece. So what I can do is I can tape it down in the corners I could have done it when I very first started, and I think I said to do it when you very first started. So, um, But I just have to be super duper really careful that I don't mess it up. So that's what I'm going to go for. All right, I'm going to use DuraClear Matte Varnish. It's a Deco Art Americana product. Um, some people have emailed and said that they have problems with curling. Uh, never use a product called Fini on your banners because it makes them plasticky looking and shiny and weird. Um, it's not a very appealing thing, so be careful with that. I always roll my finish. Um, I have not ha ever had a banner curl, and it makes me kind of sad because then I can at least figure it out, but um, I actually have never. And I think it's because I roll on the base coats and I roll on the top coat. Okay, so what I'm going to do to apply the varnish is just roll that puppy nice and smooth. Only a couple coats. The DuraClear is a polyurethane, and it's going to protect your stuff inside and out. Uh, it's an excellent product. I have had rave reviews um, over the years. I've just heard testimonials from people that are like sensational. So you really do want to just get a big old eight ounce bottle in. Use it for all your projects. I like the matte for most projects. Every now and again, I'll use a satin. Let's smooth that out. Nice thing about using a roller is you can go right on through and get to the finish um, like quickly enough so that you can smooth things out. If not, now I'm going to hold on to this because I, I want to go just in one direction so I don't make my little leaf edges curl. Two coats ought to be plenty. And then you can do one coat on the back if you'd like. It's a good idea to do one thing to the back. Um, that way, you like it has a little bit of weight and substance to pull forward. Um, if you have any problem with curling, try heating it, heating your project with a blow dryer, and then laying it face down and letting it cool face down. Um, that's helped for for um, a lot of people. All right, this is so cool. So I've got my magnets on there. And then watch this. You can just drag that over and readjust wherever you want. It's holding everything together. Um, I put the magnet, and then I can just take it off like that, down below so that I can um, have it have this part be over this little lip thing if I wanted it. So I could reposition them however I want. And there we go. Okay, so that's going to work. That is just going to work fine. Super excited. I love these magnets. What can I say? Okay, I'm going to use my Ghost Rider to give myself some planks. Do I want just three? Yeah, I think three is plenty. Okay, the nice thing about it, I don't have to worry about erasing those. I'm going to use black paint and I'm going to float on. my line. <clears throat> the 
my board. Don't want it to look too haunted. I think I'm getting a little excessively kind of squidgy going on here. Just want it to look old and country. You can put in some uh, <clears throat> knot holes if you want. And then we're going to go into our, let's see what this is, milk chocolate. And we use this big old dry brush from the set. Flick on my paper towel. We'll go right over that. And I think I'm going to switch to a big old, just scungy, scruffy brush. Okay, and we'll just continue. Make sure you address this lower area. is nice and scratchy and if you get blobs like that don't worry you can go over it with the next color next color is honey brown okay we get our honey brown going just gonna lift this up just a little bit, get a better view. Use your shoulder to get lots of nice long um, strokes. Don't do that, don't do curly stuff. your brush. Silent patty time right now. Okay, I think that's probably sufficient. We can do just a little bit of cocoa. It's going to start getting just a little bit um, light looking, so we don't want it to look too, too light. And I'll compare it over here to my piece. Okay, we're in the family. Real gentle pressure on this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use a big oval rake with lots of water in my brush and I'm going to flatten it out. It's the only way to really get a rake to do what it needs to do. And then we're going to add just a little bit more texture with 
cocoa. going to float with a little bit of the milk chocolate and black and that you can get just a little bit of grain line going So just kind of shape following. We'll go into our black and just deepen where the planks come together. Create those splits in the ends of the wood. Draw some of them in. You don't want them stacked up, so you don't want one ending there and one ending there and one ending there. You want to stagger. I'm super really good at making them all exactly the same. Okay, so I think that any more than that is going to be just overkill, and I think this will work. Okay, I've based my little leaves with burnt orange, and I'm going to shade around their edges with um, espresso. Just to tone them down just a little bit. Got my holes drilled so that it fits whatever you want to thread through. This is just going to knock back the orange color just a little bit because these are a little bit glowing. We'll do all three of them. Okay, and we're going to dry brush in the middle. Get a little cross hatching going on. And then we'll use our sticky mesh and put just a little bit of not sticking to the wet paint. Ha ha. And put our little plaid on there. Okay, I decided I don't really like the plaid on these leaves, so I'm going to just reinforce with the yellow. Got just a little too busy. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of my little raffia here, um, maybe about a foot. Yeah, you probably don't need a foot, maybe nine inches or so of it, and put it in the holes so we can prepare to put our piece together. You want to spend a little bit of time tearing apart the raffia to give it that textured look. Okay, and that'll give it a little bit more depth as well. And then you want to do the same thing to your ends so it's not solid. It's not as pretty if it's all solid. And then you can also take it, if I can grab it, and kind of give it some crinkles. Just remember when we had to fluff up the pom-poms when we were doing cheer cheerleading and all that stuff. Same kind of deal. A little bit of fetzing makes all the difference. You can add a drop of glue on your bows so that they won't untie. As I'm getting ready to trace the um, pattern for the topper, I wanted to share this is yellow tracing paper on a roll totally comes in a shorter roll so that you can use it for smaller projects. Um, but you can put it into an empty press and seal and you can totally just use the teeth to cut it if I can keep my box from falling apart. And then you have perfect little cuts and an easy way to store it. Alright, when you've got a new piece of graphite paper, which is what I've got here, you need to wipe off some of the stuff because it's way coated. Just give it a good little wipe, and then you won't end up with so much goop all over. Line up the pattern, 
That's really interesting. People don't think that um, designers trace, and I do nothing but trace. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my roller ball head, which is just a, like the roller part of a, a ballpoint pen, and but it has no ink in it, and it's got this big old comfort grip. My hand used to just die every time I had to trace patterns. Okay, and then you just trace away. And you always want to kind of give yourself a little check. That's probably coming off just a little bit too strong. Um, so I'll use lighter pressure. And if you always get confused as to which side of your graphite paper is up, then you can simply write the word top on the top of it, and then you'll know which way is up. While we're giving out graphite tips, um, one of the things that I always do is I always work within a small piece because you don't want to have heel marks on your, um, on your project, and that is very common to have. And then one more thing, if you don't like working with small pieces, you can take a cardboard or um, some kind of harder surface and use that as a resting place. You could also use your acrylic bridge, actually. Um, to do that so that you don't get heel marks and then you can do your whole pattern without shifting around. Okay, so let's come in and I'm going to show you about this bow tying. Okay, so what you're going to do is you've got to do it backwards. Okay, you're going to take your left over your right and pull it up. Okay, and pull that tight and then you do your right, your with your left going over the top and under the bow. Pull it through and you have a nice even bow where the bows are on either side. And then you can just adjust your knot and play with all the fluffing and stuff like that. All right, we're gonna paint our um, welcome word with butterscotch. Press to get a thicker line and lift up to get a thinner line. I've got just a little bit of water mixed in with my brush. A little bit more. I don't want it too thin so that you can't um, see what's going on. Notice that I'm not trying to get the whole letter on there at the same time. Just one stroke at a time, that's how you letter. Okay, so I'll just do this side. Whatever is within easy reach of your brush. This guy's not going to be within easy reach of anything. He's huge. So I just stop, pick it up again halfway, back over the top, nice straight pressure. Do this last flourish. Okay, we'll do the same exact thing using burnt orange for the other letter, and I've switched to a smaller brush. Added water to my burnt orange. I'm not certain I'm going to like that color. However, I'm going to give it a shot. Go ahead and get this all lined. Okay, we'll do the drop shading with black. Do it all to the left sides.
allow the elements to flow through. All right, I'm going to use butterscotch dry brush in my round brush because I need something kind of small. And what I want to do is go ahead and not run my hand through the wet paint. And I want to dry brush right in the centers of the harvest word. You do it as you need to. Okay, and that gives us a little bit of highlight. And then we'll go into the, um, whatever color this is, toffee. And we'll highlight just a little bit more, just right in the middle. And I can fix that little blur roll with my black. And then I think we'll take a little bit of Heritage Brick. Cut that right in mid-flight. A little bit here of black and fix that. Paint is your friend. It's always the best eraser. Yeah, I'll be fixing that letter. <clears throat> so we'll take a little bit of our Heritage Brick and just give it a little bit of a dry brush on the tops to red it up a little bit. Okay. Take some of that off and use it on the next guy here. There's our harvest wort. All right, we're going to do the same thing to the um, other letters. We're just going to do it from the bottom up. Give that just a little bit of dry brush action. Brush it all. Okay, now we can take a peek and see what we think. Okay, I think it's a little bit orange, so I think we'll repeat with the um, heritage brick at the base. Okay, now we'll do just a little bit of highlight at the top, and we should be good. I'm going to use um, the marigold, and sneak that right on there. Alright, I'm going to pop up my colors just a little bit. I'm going to use burnt orange on my orangey areas. And I'm just going to dry rub. I've already got it varnished, but that's okay. You can always kind of give it another scumble and then just give it one more coat of varnish. Okay, I just want to make my oranges appear just a little bit more orange. 
my oranges, my pumpkins. We can put a little bit more in our corn, a little bit going up into definitely in our leaves. And we could even take and put a little bit into these leaves. And now let's take the marigold color. And let's walk it up the center of the piece. Okay, so let's go from here to here to here to here. more on there. Just bring that yellow straight on up. Okay. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of wheat. Get my ghost writer out. And we're going to add some go up here, up here. And just a little bit coming in over here. Okay, we're going to use our Raphael and thinned uh, milk chocolate. Okay, so we're going to add stems. And you want to thin that so that it flows really well. going to do is I'm going to create a couple of extra kind of lines, just filler lines. Okay. And we'll do the first initial um, wheat heads. So that's going to be a push and way too much paint on my brush. A push, a push. The right kind of brush is really important here. You won't get that pretty little head. And you can put out the little whisper things. This is a Raphael number four. One of these brushes, one Raphael will last you for 30 years. They are impressive, impressive brushes. Okay, so push, push, push. Okay, now we're going to repeat this. And I'll go ahead with the repeat so that you don't have to wait. We're going to go into Dirty Brush Thinned Marigold. <clears throat> and same kind of deal. Just give it a little bit of repeat here. And then we're going to go ahead and accent the strokes that we made as well. You don't really want to cover them all up. Let's get that line coming up here. We can go ahead and highlight just the little bits of lines that we left, that we made as well. Doesn't matter if we hit right on them or not. Okay, it's just going to give us a 
but yeah, hey, we have fall going on here. Okay, and I think we need just a little bit of highlight at the top with the um, toffee color. All right, we're going to go ahead and spatter, move my stuff away. Get you on. Got this sitting in a different location today, and it's not where. Whoops, where I think it should be. So I keep drifting. Okay, that was with um, milk chocolate, and now we'll go into the marigold. The anchor. go in the direction that your brush is facing if you want them to flow off your brush. Okay, let's make a little bit of spatter noise going through the middle. Okay, and I think we probably are going to need some spatters on the piece, on the banner as well. some spatters for our background. Oh, we don't have any desert turquoise up in the topper. I think we'll have to change that. Do a little bit of desert turquoise spattering, which that could be the answer to not having any of that. Okay, so I'll bring this guy down. 